Hey, I've already done some drawing today on this, so I'm going to kick back and just kind of do a voiceover. This exercise is called um, the portrait in the style of. The style here we're going for is after Lucian Freud. This one, I believe, is an etching or a dry point, and we're going to imitate it and uh, follow through a, a little process here. We begin by picking our reference photo. And it helps when you do this to pick a reference that's something similar to the subject of, of what you would be doing if you were Lucian Freud. And you're just going to sketch it in your own sort of natural style. Um, not spend too much time on it. It's just a sketch, right? I think this one, without being sped up, took about 10 minutes or so, 12 minutes maybe. Um, because this really isn't what you're interested in, right? And the purpose of this is just to get familiar with the subject and the major shapes and how you would kind of break down and analyze the shapes. So you're going for mostly analysis here. It's not really going to be a finished drawing. It's just something to get you going and get you familiar with the subject. So it's counterintuitive to say, well, you want to do it in the style of someone else, so do it in your own style. But um, this just sort of allows you to familiarize before getting really into it. Then you pick out the your sort of influence, right? And this is a, a portrait by Freud. Um, and here I'm just like looking at some big shapes and some really weird lines that he uses, and then analyzing the overall shape, which is sort of beam-like. It's got um, one side's real simple, one side's more complicated. And um, we're gonna bring those big shapes into this analysis. And so what helps me when I do these sorts of things is to keep, um, Keep the reference handy and then look at the previous drawing on um, to the side and then draw the next drawing um, along it. And so one of the stylistic changes that I've already made is give, given a, a similar background tone to the, um, the etching. So there's some interest there already. Um, I've kept the size roughly the same so that I can pull proportions right over from the previous one so I don't have to worry about proportions as much. And um, here you have to kind of force yourself to go big to small, right? Um, you could very easily with Freud get obsessed with the small little cross hatching stuff that he does, but that would kind of miss out on what's really going on. You're looking to eventually come across with something psychologically sort of similar, right? Um, Freud, I think he was uh, actually, you know, Freud psychologist's grandson or something. So he's doing these portraits that, that get to the psychology of the subject. And, you know, of course, he would be sitting with people maybe for a few hours and using that to kind of using someone's actual physical presence to help with the psychology. And when you have a photo, it's a little more difficult, I think, to get to that. Um, so you have to kind of use your imagination. And one of the things that Freud is really in interested in um, visually is these sort of distorted shapes. Um, they're slightly exaggerated and, and puffed up and those distorted shapes orchestrated together seem to really get to what's going on inside the figure or what might be going on inside the figure. And the the strange thing about it is that it sort of works. You, you don't know exactly what's going on, um, but you can tell that there's an inner world there. And that suggestion of the inner world I think is really critical and stylistically you'll notice that in the bright highlights he just sort of doesn't really have any hatching and you notice that there's mixtures of, of long short and medium hatching strokes um, they tend not to cur curve a lot maybe just a little um, there aren't really any squiggles Mostly it's straight hatching. The straight hatching does evolve and change, so it won't all be just sort of rigidly parallel. Um, 
you know, the outer contours are have just the slight arc to them. They're not perfectly cut out and they're not perfectly round. Um, so there's a mixture of, of these kind of curvy shapes and straight shapes. Um, they're finished. The whole head is very finished. Um, the there's not a lot that's left undone. The garment and the background aren't really as attended to. Um, so, but they're resolved. So you have to figure out a way to sort of resolve that. And right now I'm working into these small forms because I've established the larger forms. And one of the things that I noticed in the in the Freud portrait are these like, there are these two dark values. They're just too dark um, in some of the wrinkles, right? They're really pushed really far, and they're used to create these um, these sort of guiding lines through the figure. Um, and typically, there'll be S curves balanced against arcs and so on, and um, the strange thing is that, that his portrait isn't really based on light per se. There's a sense of light, but it's really used just to get to the form. It's not about the lighting situation that this figure's in. And so if I were to really focus on the light here, I would kind of lose a lot of information on the right side. Like if you were to squint at the screen and look at the reference photo, a lot of that information would just go away. And if you were painting, that would be fine. You could just kind of um, hint at what's going on in the shadow and really focus on what's going on in the nose and the mouth and, and the, uh, the eye that's in the light because there's more contrast there. And um, that would allow you to play around more with color and so on. But here, um, it's a bit different because we're going for a particular style and the style isn't necessarily about the lighting. Um, it's using the lighting to get to the forms and it's actually lifting up some of the lighting. So here I have chosen to kind of squash the proportions and make it a little more, um, a little more square. I think, um, the distortions in Freud make it a little more interesting. And so I was going to kind of go for a, a more distorted view here. And then here I wanted to focus on um, on the sort of the medium sized shapes that I missed out on the on the previous version. Um, normally with this exercise too, we would do uh, four. So we'd do like one in your own style and then three progressing towards the natural style. But in the interest of time, um, or, or the imitative style rather, but in the interest of time, I'm only gonna do two sort of attempting the, the style of Freud here. And uh, one of the things that I noticed is that there's some contouring, right? Um, I noticed around the eyes and nose, there's a little bit of contour. Um, there's some carved out marks. There's a lot of like these kind of tonal grays through built up through lots and lots of subtle hatching. Some of the hatch marks don't go um, at very different angles from each other. They're very subtle. So uh, I'm gonna use that to come in there. In the eye, I just kind of put a tone over the eye first because there's a shadow over the whole eye just about. And um, in the in the reference, they're not, uh, in the style reference, the eyes are mostly grayed out. There's no real light in there, um, in the eyeball. And here what I wanted to focus on was getting the, the most distinctive um, and most sort of emotive shapes around the eye and focus on kind of exaggerating the sort of structural elements. So giving everything a little bit of volume through this hatch work and deciding on where the sides are, even though they're not um, necessarily strongly defined in the, ref in the photo reference here. Um, really focusing on that, especially around the nose and the cheek and the bags around the eyes, making sure each one of those is kind of carved separately so that it really becomes dimensional. And then using those little half tones to find the both sides of the form. You know, you could find a highlight in the nose and 
and kind of lose some of the edge on the nose and it would work fine but when you're going for this particular style i think it needed some more work like that one of the interesting things about how he approaches um, hair and eyebrows is they're not really necessarily distinct from the way that he hatches the rest of the skin it all kind of like blends together um so i wanted to be sure to approach that in a similar way now here's the tricky thing all of this right side is in shadow in the reference photo but we want to be sure to get all the forms there because um, our stylistic reference shows all the forms um, and yeah we're going to adapt and, and change that a little bit to be a little closer to the reference um, but we we do want to to hang on to that style and so what i needed to do here was kind of make sure that these um, open highlight negative shapes where we're, where it's just going to be blank. Um, make sure those shapes are interesting. Um, so I wanted a really interesting shape for that, um, that cheek next to the nose on the left side here, because that's something that, that I really liked about the, the style reference is that, that shapes really cool, um, where there's nothing going on. Um, and then to kind of volumize and to pay attention to some of these wrinkles, um, I found it necessary to exaggerate what's happening in some of the half tones and to really focus on on building out the volume of these of these little wrinkles and exaggerating anything that I saw here um, because I'm pretty sure that's what what Freud would have done with this reference. And then this is a funky situation because um, the reference has dark hair, or the reference photo here has light white hair, and our style reference has dark hair. So um, I had to figure out kind of how to create a, a shape there to hang on to that we could leave alone to create that sense of white hair. And then here, um, this was an opportunity to create um, what would have been totally in shadow, but to create a, a complementary area on the other, on the right cheek, um, make an interesting sort of lighter shape there. And then here, I noticed that there were some fly outs from the outer edge in the hair. So I wanted some, some fly outs to kind of happen um, on the outer contour of the figure. And then I wanted to push the value down in the hair here, just to be sure that it sort of receded and didn't pop forward too far. Um, even though it is white hair, it gets pretty dark in the reference photo. Um, and I just wanted to, it's gonna read ultimately as, as white hair, but we needed to push that value. And here what I wanted to do is create a interesting shape up in the brightest highlight here. Um, it's pretty interesting in the reference photo and I just wanted to be sure to to hang on to that um, and to bind that with a little bit of hatch work so that it's very clear what's going on in that highlight. And here's just using some traditional sort of rendering, uh, hair rendering where you kind of leave the highlight alone, follow some strands and um, work that volume. Um, Freud kind of goes all directions in the hair, um, counter to the, to the strands of the hair. Uh, that's not necessarily how a lot of people would approach it. They would more follow the strands. So I wanted to be sure to incorporate just some straight hatching that doesn't really follow the strands of the hair, but follows the volume of the hair. And I think that's what Freud was kind of after, is getting the volume of the hair. So if the hair kind of has a boxier edge, he would hatch along sort of a boxier edge of it. And um, one of the nice things about working digitally is I can kind of erase into these negative shapes and kind of make sure that these highlights are, are still fascinating. Um, and zooming out and comparing is always good. So anytime you can take a step back or zoom out and, and take a look at what you're doing, I think that's necessary. I um, left out a, a, sh a critical shadow there, so I had to put that back in. And then um, now it's kind of getting more refined where I have to make some, some very uh, subtle decisions. Um, Freud doesn't do a lot with like shadow core necessarily, but I felt it was time to kind of deepen some shadows and 
start to push some values down because everything's kind of laid out, but it was all kind of the same single value. Um, occasionally he has some very dark outlines or some hatching that's just really, um, um, it gets like one little line that's too dark or too heavy, um, surrounded by some hatching, but it's, but it still works. So I was trying to find some places where that would, um, that would be the case and I could really push down some values and uh, in the re in the style reference it's around the eyes around the bags of the eyes and then to be sure that it's done because the head's done I needed to work into the neck a little bit and and to get some of the the um, fat deposits around the neck here and to work into the shirt a little bit so that um, the whole thing just kind of looks complete and without that it would just be sort of this floating head and it, it wouldn't have the the sense of totality that I think the stylistic reference has and I think here it's simple and descriptive um, is what you're after in the garment um, he didn't do a lot of uh, a lot of work to get a lot of detail into the garments in these in these etchings. So um, here we're looking at a, a pretty good progression and putting the style reference up to it is kind of nice. One of the things that I noticed was that he um, maybe used a little bit of like aquatin or something to get a, a printed texture in there. So I wanted to include a little bit of that because that kind of had this subtle effect of creating um, some lighting. And it took me a minute to realize that he actually used it in the figure as well, um, and not just in the background. So that, would, that will make it so that we can create a sense of light coming from uh, top to bottom here. And so a little bit of that around just the the hair and a little bit on the cheeks and stuff um, just kind of gave it this nice sense and this nice sense of completion um, to finish off what Freud was kind of after. So I highly recommend doing this exercise whenever you're trying to um, imitate somebody's style. And imitating somebody's style is, is always good, no matter what stage of drawing that you're at. Um, you're studying how somebody else abstracts the subject that you kind of want to work on. So in this case, it's it's portraits, and um, it uh, allows you to force yourself to make decisions you wouldn't make on your own, and to create things that you wouldn't make on your own. And I think that's really important um, to help you sort of grow as an artist and to not stagnate, and to begin to take influences from people that you enjoy and I think you'll find that this is just a good way to increase the range of what you're capable of. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got a lot out of it and um, we'll do more with this sort of thing soon.